Hi friends, Julian here. It's a lovely day outside and I've got the whole day off. I'm going to hopefully do a few small projects that I've been meaning to do for quite a while. That is finally attach the new burner design to the foundry somehow. Also, I'm noticing that I'm wanting to do more delicate castings with more detail, possibly with words and lettering and embossing, that kind of thing involved. I've got a few things that I want to do that are a little bit detailed. For instance, here's a medal I'm making. Just a little interlude regarding this medal. Every year my wife and I join some great mates and we go cycling around the island of Mallorca for a week and it's brilliant fun. Anyway, being the crafty type of person I am, I usually make some crap Amazing. chocolate medals for everyone to give out as prizes at the end of the holiday. But now I'm into casting, I thought let's make a real medal. Real medals would be amazing. And as per usual, I've gone completely overboard. It's extremely detailed. If it works, it'll be the best medal ever. Anyway, I'm getting off the point again. My point is, I'm wanting details in my castings now. For example, on the medal, there's a bike chain all the way around on the front and back, some text, and a 3D model of the island of Mallorca with the mountains and everything, and potentially a very problematic tiny loop at the top. Here's another example. On this special play button for the Creaky Blinder channel that I'll be casting later, along with a space comma for Conspiracy Cats, you can see a very detailed all-seeing eye on the back of his 5k bronze play button. I put an all-seeing eye on it because he managed to join the Illuminati on their website. So all this detail is great and all, but I'm terrible at lifting patterns out of the sand. If I twist the pattern or tilt or knock the sand on my way out, it's basically ruined. So I really want to solve this problem. I have real trouble removing the pattern from the sand and leaving a nice sand imprint. That's probably inexperience, lack of practice, shaky hands, whatever. But I thought I'm gonna make something that will make my life a lot easier. I'm going to make a pattern puller. I've never seen a pattern puller before. I assume they exist. I did Google it. I looked at all the images and all I got was hundreds of images of those pullers you use to remove pulleys and bearings. Sort of a bit like a, a three-pronged fairground thing, but with a screw in the middle. So you can grab something and then push and pull from the middle. That's not what I want to make. What I want is something that, let's pretend this is my mold. Uh, no, that's a terrible model. Here's a better one, in true Blue Peter fashion. Let the bad audio commence. Let's pretend. So let's pretend this is Creaky's very intricate play button pattern, and it's in the sand, and I have to remove it very carefully without making any of the sand move underneath. Now, I'm actually fairly ham-fisted. I've got huge hands, and I find very, very tiny, delicate movements quite difficult, which is why I think this project is is the one for me. What I think I need is essentially a frame like this and really just one rod. And you can put it anywhere on on the edge of the cope or the drag. Uh, as long as I've got three points, it should be fine. Let me tilt the camera up a bit. As long as this rod is vertical. I've got some linear bearings from other projects that uh, I just don't need anymore. I've got uh, at least two rods and four bearings. So what I intend to do is make a little device that can attach to the pattern and then I can lift it straight up vertically. So in its current arrangement, it's pretty good. You can lift it straight vertically, but there's nothing to stop me accidentally swiveling. So I suggest that an extra rod and a beam and then when I get this all ready and attach it to the pattern, then I clamp these two together. And then together, imagine this, I haven't got enough hands and it's very light and flimsy, but that means that that bad rotation can't happen now. It can only go directly vertical. Let me cut in, the audio is getting really bad. Theoretically, as long as the two rods are parallel with each other and vertical, but it's more important that they're parallel to each other, the frame could be any old shape as long as it's stiff. Let's build it. Using some scrap wood, I start off with the base. I build what is essentially two wooden frames, but at right angles to each other. I've got some old shelving brackets to keep everything rigid. Now I have to mount the two rods. 
The main rod has three linear bearings on it and the stabilising rod only needs one. As I fix the rods to the frame, I take great care to make sure each one is mounted vertically, using packing or spacers if needed. This will also mean that they are parallel to each other. Once they are both attached, I fix a wooden beam between a linear bearing from each rod. Enough to reach from there to there. 30 centimetres would do it. Back in a minute. In through the woodshed, and I've got found this lovely ply from when I did up our bathroom. I'm not going to use it for this project because three days ago we had a tawny owl land on the tree by our bedroom and did some lovely woo woo and um, I'd had a beer. I, I tried to open the window to get some audio of it and it flew away. <laughs> but I've decided to make a tawny owl box and it's a very long and thin owl box so I don't want to cut these up now I've found them. When we were doing up the house I saved this bit of door trim. Now that is stiff and thin. This beam will stop the pattern twisting as I lift it up. Great. Now I need to make the metal plate that will attach to the pattern and allow it to be lifted up. This plate will be attached to the two linear bearings still empty on the main rod. I also bend it in such a way as to allow it to reach slightly below the frame. Finally I attach it to the linear bearings with bolts. OK, here it is fully assembled. So this is how I hope it will work. First I place it over the pattern to be lifted, then I join the plate and the pattern somehow. I think screws are going to be best. Once the pattern is ready to be lifted, I lower the stabilising beam bearings to meet the pattern lifting bearings and clamp them together with a G-clamp. Once clamped, no lateral movement is possible, then hopefully I can seamlessly and perfectly vertically lift the pattern out of the mould. Well that's the theory. Let's try it out for real. Ah! Perfect timing. I've been trying out these wooden dowels as pins between the patterns. I'm changing the subject now, but I'll just quickly talk about these. So whenever I print two pattern pieces, I put uh, pins between them now to keep the registration right. And this is going to be a space comma. You won't understand what that is unless you follow uh, Conspiracy Cats. <laughs> but this is going to be a space comma for him. And I've managed to work out what size hole is required for shop bought hardwood dowels. And it's, apart from them being too long, I'll just chop them off with a bandsaw. But they are perfect and they're quite loose. When I 3D print them, it's very hard to get a lovely press fit that isn't too stiff. So that's a new thing I'm doing. Lots of things to do, too much jibber jabber. It's time lapse time. No, it's not. Oh, this is secret by the way. No telling anyone. I think one person on the holiday might be subscribed to me, but I'm pretty sure they don't watch sort of religiously, so I think we're safe. As long as I don't put it in the thumbnail. As a treat for sitting through all that, let's do a quick casting. So, for conspiracy cats, hello mate, I've got a space comma. It's in two halves. And I'm using my new dowel system. They're a little tight still because I'm, I'm rushing and I've just had to uh, cut them. I haven't really sanded them properly so they're a tiny bit tight. But it shouldn't matter. I really need them in this one. Okay. Alright, so we've got the space comma for conspiracy cats. For creaky, the creaky blinder for reaching 5k. I've made a really special one. It's got an Illuminati, as he and I are both in the Illuminati. I thought it'd be apt to uh, put an all-seeing eye on the back. 
Now, Creaky's one, potentially, is actually quite difficult. Uh, it's got a lot that could go wrong. Now, Creaky's play button will be a brilliant test for the pattern puller. So let's make up the mould. Because of all that detail in Creaky's all-seeing eye, I decided to make up a small batch of facing sand from my finest bag of sand. Now, I've never tried this before, and hopefully it will work out. It's basically the same green sand recipe of bentonite clay, sand and water, except the sand is very fine. Right, facing sand made, I sieve a small amount over the patterns. And then I fill the rest of the drag up with regular green sand. Now I put the other sides of the patterns in the cope side. And because Conspiracy Cats' space comma is so huge, I decide to put in a large feeder. I remove the sprue and feeder tube and cut a pouring basin. Now the moment of truth. Time to remove the coat and see if anything terrible has happened. Oh, nice. Creaky's triangle has come out well. Oh, I'm very pleased. See if I can get these patterns out. But I'm mainly concerned about the other side of Creaky's pattern, the all-seeing eye. But before I remove that, I cut the gating system and I taper both gates as they approach the patterns. Oh dear. I just made a whoopsie, so I reused a, a feeder and it had a big sunken uh, bit in it and I, I just wasn't thinking and I put it in upside down so the sunken thing the air void first and of course as soon as it hit the thing the air exploded and <sighs> bronze went everywhere so let's hope let's hope it's not too bad right fingers crossed with this one I hope the triangle will still be there. Okay, now the tricky bit. Nice! And it looks great. Right. Now this one. Now the nightmare moment. I'm going to try the pattern puller. This one's got a lot of detail. Because Creaky's play button didn't separate into two parts, 
I have to drill into the top half of the pattern. I should have thought ahead and brought some screws. I'm not sure if I've got screws that are, aren't going to wreck this. But let's have a look. This is slightly destructive, obviously. Blimey, where's all the small drill bits when you need them? screws aren't going to go in there. No. I need smaller screws than those even. Or bigger holes. Oh, what about these? These are actually quite... Hmm. Right, even though these screws are massive, they're very long and thin. So I might... Be able to I think I might have purchased. All right, here goes. Now very carefully, I clamp the linear bearings together. This should mean that the only movement possible now is up. All right, let's clamp to that. Here goes. Okay, I'm now going to have to just calm down because I think it's worked, but we have a little bit of... A little bit of breakage around the edge. God, that lifted out beautifully! I have, this is, I... This, I have this trouble because there's, there isn't actually that much draft on the edges of, that, of this play button. This will be spectacular if this works. Oh my god, I'm actually so chuffed. I can't believe that. Right, I'm going to... Tip this on its side, blow out anything that is loose, taking care not to blow the eye. Now that goes onto there. Absolutely blooming chuffed. Let's see how it casts. We'll pour outside.
Okay, here it goes. Wow, what a day. It's heavy. Well, it's not that heavy. Oh my God, please work. <gasps> Look at that. That is incredible. Yes. I can't believe it. Oh, I could cry. I can't believe it. It's perfect. You can even see the... That is just amazing. Holy moly. Well, there seems to be a crack there. I don't know why. I hope that doesn't mean there's a uh, shrinkage there. On conspiracy cats's thing. That is amazing. Let's see if I can get a nice close up. I used to have a little proddy thing. You see here, all the lines are perfect. I thought these big ones might work, but in between, there's a little tiny faint one and it's all, I'm so chuffed. I'm slightly worried there's a crack here. I don't know why that will be. Uh, maybe I took it out. Maybe this is actually still molten inside and I took it out. I've only taken out, it's only 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. Should we do it? Here it goes. It's pretty warm. Look at this. Cat's triangle looks nice. That needs dunking. Ooh, here goes. Because Cats is one, it's so huge, it's so thick, and it's its own, it's its own feeder, and you see how the feeder has shrunk. It's had a little divot there, which is a shame, it's shrunk in. But it's also happened on the triangle, because the very centre was the hottest bit. 
So that's the bit that freezes last. And that's the bit that um, suffers the most from shrinkage. And unfortunately, the triangle kind of approached that central area. So I don't know, hopefully that won't look bad once I've polished it up. But if it does, I might fill that, that with, um, fill the bottom with something to cover up that little crack. We'll see. I need to cut these off. Oh, so chuffed with that. This was a massive risk. This was. Can't believe it. Right, I'm going to chop off the ugly bits. Back in a minute. The size of this thing. The bronze in here is... I had no idea it was going to be this heavy. That's why we've had those problems. I still think it'll look cool polished up though. That'll just be a little slightly dished area. This, however, is crazy. There's been a little bit of a crack of shrinkage down there. Oh, that's amazing. And this, this I don't know what to do. I mean, by the time I've polished all this up, this might look nice and rough in here. And the crack won't be so visible. God, didn't my um, pattern puller work well? It's brilliant. I can't believe it. I'm going to grind off that bit and this bit and just check they're okay. I've got carried away again. You might as well have a look at what I'm doing. There's a tiny little, tiny, tiny little um, bit that's not smooth right down there where the shrink has gone deepest and it's really annoying. My fingers are too fat, I can't get to it. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> I don't care how long it takes me. I really like that little divot. So that dark spot, that spot, that's a reflection. That's not actually a dark spot anymore. It was like a little grain of sand or a crack. But now it's just the metal that's kind of become parabolic. But I will polish that out a bit more. Morning guys. So today I'm going to polish up some more. I've done a little bit here. The space comma. It's my birthday last week and I bought myself some safety gloves, finally after absolutely wrecking my hands. You see this, look at this big lump here. That is when I did the um, kettlebells and I just nicked myself with the sander and it's never quite got right. So this has been a long time coming and thank you for your comments. I've got myself some decent gloves and it still allows me to touch the surface to see how smooth it is. And most importantly, and I'm very excited, I have got one of these. This is an AirShield Pro. This was not cheap. This was about 200 quid, which is a ridiculous amount of money. But I hope to be able to keep my glasses on and I hope it to be simple enough that I will just always use it when I'm doing sanding. And I think that is the case. Anyway, I'm gonna use it today for the first time while polishing this. Because I'm asthmatic, when I'm welding, and grinding. I just have a terrible cough for two days afterwards and it keeps me up and my wife up at night so I think this might be worth it in the long run. We shall see. I'll duck down but it also means I can wear my nice glasses. I still can't get a decent shot. I'm a terrible cameraman. I've had my same glasses for nearly three years and I 
have delayed it for two years running because they're so expensive and I've just had a new set made. So this should hopefully protect these from the metal chips. So in a way, this hopefully will help pay for itself along with the better sleeping and the less asthma. We shall see. It's all right, it's quite heavy, space comma. 